Welcome to Kids Say the Deepest Things, where we explore deep things that kids say. My name is Manasseh Lairfield, and today we're joined by my daughter, Atara. Hi, Atara. Hi. Welcome. Do you remember, and it's okay if you don't, when you were, I think, three or four years old, we were sitting together at the kitchen table, and you looked at me and you said, Daddy, do you know why crackers are called crackers? And you picked up a cracker. It was one of those long, like flatbread type of crackers. You picked it up, you held it in your hand, and you just went snap. And you said, crackers are called crackers because they crack. <laughs> and I was so blown away by that. I said, Atara, wow, did you come up with that all by yourself? And you looked at me and just said, yep. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's like really impressive. You said, well, yeah, of course, because I'm a kid. <laughs> And that made me stop and think. And I was like, wait a second, Atara, do you think that because you're a kid, you're better at understanding stuff than growing up? And like without missing a beat, you were just like, yeah, yeah, kids are better than understanding things. And it was one of my favorite stories. I love that. And I love it for lots of reasons, which we'll discuss and explore in just a minute. But I'm curious to hear your take first. What is something you think that we can learn from that story. I think that kids' minds have different, like, opinions than grown-ups. And why would that make kids better at understanding things than grown-ups? It makes them think differently. Oh, okay. So thinking differently gives you a different perspective that does, in a way, let you come up with ideas that grown-ups maybe wouldn't come up with. Yeah. So in a way, you are better at coming up with things than grown-ups. Right. Okay. I like that. Let's explore that further. Atara, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And now we'll continue our conversation. The story of Atara's observation about the cracker highlights an important Jewish concept. Jewish wisdom teaches who is wise, he who learns from everyone. Every single person has something they can teach us. There is no one we can't learn something from, even a child. Children often see the world from a totally different perspective, through a fresh lens, without being clouded by all of the things that society tells us and teaches us to look at. Children can look at things in a totally different way, and in that way, we can learn a ton from children. The Hasidic masters used to say we can even learn from little babies. Babies never stay still. They're always moving. And what we learn from that is how we should always be moving, always doing, always be busy with things that are important. When babies want something, they cry. We too should learn how to ask others to help us. And we should cry out to the Almighty in prayer when we don't have the things that we need, the things that we want. We can learn so much just from babies. We can learn from all of the people all around us. My grandfather of blessed memory used to, wherever he went, he would ask people about what they did. He would ask people about a thing that they were passionate about. He would ask about the thing that they were doing, whether it was an amusement park and he was trying to figure out how the roller coaster worked or talking to somebody who was pumping the gas or working at the airport. He would find out so much and learn so much about people just from asking the questions. In Denmark, there's something called the human library. It's this fascinating model, this fascinating concept where you can go and check people out as if they were books. So you have people who are standing basically on these shelves and you can check them out and then have a conversation with a perfect stranger about a topic that you want. And through doing that, you get to learn so much about the world and so much about this person that has a very different perspective than you do. We see great people, Moses, for example, the greatest person who ever lived. And yet when he sees his father-in-law Yisro come up with a suggestion, come up with an idea that he didn't think of, he doesn't push back. He says, you know what, you're right. And he implements Yisro's suggestion. We see even God himself, who is all knowing, when he has these, they seem like fights with Abraham, where they're arguing over whether or not to save the city of Sodom, the city of Sodom. 
And Abraham says, well, what if I can find 100 righteous people and 10 righteous people? And they begin fighting back and forth. And then finally, God agrees. He acknowledges. God is going to acknowledge and teach us by example that we can learn from anyone. We can learn from anything. When we're open to learning from anyone, only then can we be considered wise. The Torah, which is the source of Jewish wisdom, is compared to water. Because when a person is thirsty, they don't care where the water is coming from. Water is water. You look, you know, on the Boston Marathon, as the runners are coming and their people are handing them the cups. Nobody stops in the middle and is like, wait, what are your political affiliations? Where do you come from? What are your, what's your race? What's your ethnicity? What's your religion? No, water's water. And the same is true with knowledge. The same is true with information. As long as the information is valid, we don't care where it came from. Jewish wisdom teaches us in the tractate of Erevin that had the Torah not been given, we would learn so much about the world just by looking at the things around us, not even people. We would learn modesty from a cat, honesty from an ant, and good manners from a rooster. It doesn't matter where the information comes from as long as we're learning. That is someone who is truly wise. And that's the way it is with Jewish learning. In Jewish learning, there is no hierarchy. There's no concept that a person can't fight or argue with somebody who's older or wiser than they are because we're searching for truth. And when we're searching for truth or we're trying to become wise, all that matters is the information. I saw this firsthand when my cousin became a bar mitzvah here in America. Usually when a Jewish boy turns 13 or a girl turns 12 and they celebrate their bar bat mitzvah. It's common for the bar mitzvah boy or the bat mitzvah girl to give a speech. And usually in that speech, they talk about the Torah portion with some sort of ethical message or idea. That is not what they do in the more observant circles. Definitely not in Israel. In Israel, the bar mitzvah boy gives what's known as a pshetel. He gives a halachic discourse, a discourse with some novel idea that he came up with himself. So here's my 13 year old cousin. And because my uncle is very close with lots of great rabbis right there in the front are some of the leading rabbis of the generation it was for those who know the names of Rufal Shmuel Levitz from Usher Arieli and they're sitting there in the front and my cousin is giving this discourse I did not envy him at all but what was really interesting is unlike in America where everyone sits quietly and politely and listens and then claps at the end they were pushing back so he had said something, and again, I don't even remember what the topic was or what he was talking about, but what happened next stood with me forever. Whatever he had said, they took issue with. And Rav Rafal first started almost yelling back and saying, no, that's not true because of this, 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 and this. And then my cousin fought back and he was like, no, that is right because of this, this, and that. And now Rav Usher Arieli starts adding in. And now the two of them, these two great rabbis, these sages, that collectively together have probably thousands of students are fighting with this 13 year old boy and he doesn't back down. He keeps on going and going and going until finally these two great rabbis look at him and said, you know what? You're right, go on. And he just continued as if nothing happened. Can you imagine anywhere else in the world having experts in their field agree and admit that a 13 year old boy was correct in their argument? that he knew something better than they did, it's unfathomable. Imagine a university professor having a student fight and say, no, what you're saying is wrong. No, in a university, the professor is always right. Even when he's wrong, he's right. The greatest accolade a Torah scholar can ever hope to achieve is to be known as a Talmud Chacham, which literally means a wise student. Just think about that expression for a second. Go back to our example with the university professor. Imagine a university professor giving an incredible discourse on some very deep subject on quantum physics. And when he's done with his presentation, you go over to the professor and say, wow, you're such a wise student. He would be offended. A student? What do you mean? I'm a great professor. I'm a brilliant scientist. Jewish wisdom teaches that we are all just students. And the greatest accolade the greatest title we can ever hope to achieve is to be called a student. In order to become wise, we have to have the humility to learn from anyone. And we have to have the curiosity 
just like Atara, the young child. And children have this curiosity more than anyone else. They're always curious about the world around them. And if we have that curiosity, if we're constantly questioning and asking, then we'll truly become wise. But every time we ask, every time we ask a question, every time we approach the world with curiosity, there is a vulnerability there. Without that element, it's not a question. Often we say statements with question marks. That's not a question. Going back to Atara, and since this is Kids Say the Deepest Things, when she was little, she would wake up every morning and instead of saying, I'm hungry, can we have breakfast? She would say, who wants breakfast? Me. And she would ask the question and answer it. That's not a question. A question by definition is an acknowledgement. I don't know something, but I want to know more. And that is vulnerable. It's vulnerable to acknowledge and admit I don't know something. But that is a prerequisite to attaining knowledge and becoming wise. Albert Einstein famously said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. Similarly, Isra Rabi, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics, was once asked how he became such a great scientist. And he said, my mother made me into a scientist without ever knowing it. Because when I came home from school, she didn't say, so Izzy, did you have a great day at school? Did you have fun? She didn't even ask what I learned. Instead, she would say, Izzy, did you ask a good question today? And that emphasis on questions, that emphasis on curiosity, of being curious about everything in our world is what led him to become the great scientist that he was. If we use that combination of curiosity and humility, if we're open to learning from anyone and everyone, only then will we truly become wise. Thank you so much for joining us on Kids Say the Deepest Thing. If you have a great story that you want us to dissect and learn something from, feel free to share it with us. And if you have any other questions, comments, rebuttals, you can reach me at kids at Thanks and have a wonderful day.